everyone. I appreciate everyone coming. If you're a patient of ours, welcome back. If you're a new patient, welcome to the office. You're in amazing hands with Dr. Hakimi. I'm here for any questions you may have. Um, after the presentation, you can give us a call or anytime tomorrow, okay? I look forward to meeting everybody. Thanks for uh, getting online and spending your uh, Thursday night with us. Um, I, my goal is um, every two weeks or uh, a few weeks, we have these discussions. We used to have them more in person in our office. Now, because of COVID-19, we decided to move them to online, and it's been amazing the response that we get from patients, how much they like this more, because at least we look at each other without a mask on, right? Who would have thought that one day Zoom meetings become more personal than um, uh, real meetings? Um, our goal for today is uh, to talk about liposuction, demystify, you know, smart lipo, what's snapback lipo, what is cool sculpting, and which one is right for who? Because at Liftig, we personally believe that um, there's, there's so many options these days for, for patients. Because of social media, we hear so much, and every company claims that they do A, B, and C. How do people know what's the best option for them? So my goal is that at Liftique, we uh, take that question out and we take it upon ourselves to, when we see you on your consultation, we can prescribe basically which procedure fits you best based on your anatomy, based on your expectation, and the type of downtime that you're willing to uh, take. Everyone has heard about cool sculpting. They ask me all the time, oh, Michael, you're a plastic surgeon. Does this freezing the fat work? What's the difference between cool sculpting and just liposuction? As you can see in this slide, cool sculpting is a non-surgical, non-invasive method. It has a vacuum machine that sits on a small area of your abdomen or flank or anywhere that you want to lose the fat, sucks that area in and freezes the fat for about half an hour to one hour. Now, the temperature that's gonna freeze the fat to is gonna be suboptimal for cells to live. It's so cold that cells actually die. And those of you who might have experienced this, you'll see that your skin looks pink, it feels a little sore for a few days, and over the next few weeks, you're gonna, you're gonna lose that fat. That fat is gonna go into your liver and you're gonna pee it out and you're gonna lose the fat. So the question, does it work? Yes, cool sculpting works. Is it as effective as liposuction? Not really, because you're gonna need multiple, depending on your area of interest, you're gonna need multiple uh, application to be applied to your abdomen. So as you can see in the, uh, in, the, in the photo on the lower part of this slide, now this is another version of cool sculpting. As you can see, it's not infrequent to see in med spas people sitting with multiple, hand, hand, uh, uh, multiple handles being attached to their abdomen. Not only that, you also are gonna need multiple treatments. Uh, usually one treatment is not gonna suffice. You might, lose about, you might lose about a centimeter or so max. Think of it as the cool sculpting to liposuction is like taking the stairs versus taking the elevator. You could get there. It might take you a much longer time. And it might also out of being more costly to you because of the number of treatments that you're gonna need. Liposuction is a one-time treatment. Uh, some people, I do the majority of my liposuction while patients are wide awake under local anesthesia. So you don't have the sore throat and the downtime of general anesthesia afterward. But you will see the results in about three weeks to one month. And afterwards, by the three month period, your result is almost maximized. And you will see the entire result as opposed to these non-invasive methods, uh, you're gonna need multiple treatments before you see the result. So that's one thing as far as the difference between the two. Now, everything I just told you is correct if you're 20, 30, or maybe in your early 40s, maybe. Because what happens after 40 is your skin gets loose. You lose that snap back in your skin. When you pull it, it doesn't snap back like it used to in the past. These machines, cool sculpting, sculpture, you might have heard of Kybella that melts the fat, all the non-surgical options, what they do miss is treating the skin. 
they melt, the, they, they freeze the fat, or in terms of sculpture, it melts some of the fat with laser. But what they don't provide is adequate skin uh, tightening. So it's not that infrequent for uh, my consultation. Every, at least every couple of weeks, I have a patient that comes in and says, you know, I had cool sculpting done. Yes, I got results after four treatments or whatnot, but now I have this loose skin that nobody told me it doesn't go back. Same story with sculpture, same story with Kybella. So at Liftique, not only we do liposuction, and we do them either under local or under general anesthesia, but also our brand is based on radio frequency skin tightening. The instrument that you see on the right side is one of the most common uh, machines we use. As you can see, it's a, it's a blunt needle, it's not sharp, that goes under the skin and heats up your skin from under. The, the part, the button thing on top measures the temperature to make sure your skin is heated to the right temperature uh, for the right amount of time. This machine is what we use before we liposuction in the same, in the same surgery, and it helps the skin retract. It treats the skin before we liposuction the fat. Because we use radio frequency and we heat up the fat, it also melts the fat before we liposuction it. So it makes for an easier liposuction for the surgeon and it makes for better results because uh, not only we melt the fat, we also are able to have the skin retract after the liposuction. A few years ago, maybe like even as close as four years ago, if somebody would come to my office in their early 50s and they want a liposuction, we would have an extensive discussion that your skin may not snap back and you might need a tummy tuck after this. Now, this is an insurance policy to make sure we maximize your skin retraction after a liposuction uh, procedure. So these are not my results. These are from, lipos from Cool Sculpting and other uh, doctors' websites. That they, this is, I just want you to get an idea of who is a good candidate for a Cool Sculpting procedure. As you can see, these are young patients without much skin laxity, and the majority of them have had a few sessions of uh, cool sculpting. This is probably the most recent adjunct to their uh, company is the fact that now you can freeze the fat in the, in the chin area for the double chin. One thing that you, you should know is cool sculpting as non-invasive as it is. It doesn't involve needles, it doesn't involve lidocaine, but it's not a, a risk-free either. Um, there is there's something called paradoxical adipose hyperplasia. It's a fancy name that sometimes the area, as you can see the square area, rectangular area here, the area that you treat with, with cool sculpting, instead of losing fat, actually makes the fat grow larger. Now you can see on both slides, the one on the right from a lateral view and the one on the left from a, profile, from a frontal view, this is exactly the entire area that the, uh, the, uh, the applicator was applied and this patient unfortunately had a reverse effect. The treatment for it is difficult because it's not just fluffy fat to suck it out. Majority of these patients, they have very uh, scar fibrous fat that forms in this area and they're gonna need tummy tuck or something more invasive to make this uh, better. I'm not here to tell you this and scare you away from cool sculpting. It is something that works for some patients, but you have to do your research to see if that's truly the right procedure for you. Are you in the right age category? Are you, does, does it meet your expectation? Are you aware of the risk of paradoxical adipose hyperplasia prior to, uh, to signing up for the procedure? So we talked about freezing the fat, right? Um, then there is snapback lipo, then there is tummy tuck. This is, um, this is one of the most frequently asked questions. People say, okay, Dr. Akimi, I know that I don't like my abdomen. After I had a few kids, I gain a little bit of weight. How do I know whether I, get, uh, I, I need liposuction or a tummy tuck or I should go and freeze the fat? Because everywhere that I go, they say their machine is the right answer. Think of it this way, freezing the fat is not for someone who has skin laxity. If you have rolls in your abdomen, this is not the procedure for you because all it does, it makes that fold more noticeable by hollowing it out and losing the fat, right? Imagine like a pillowcase, 
when you take the pillow out, it only folds more. It doesn't really get better. Yes, it is non-surgical. Yes, it doesn't have a downtime. Uh, yes, you can go back to work the next day, but doesn't mean because you can do it, you should do it. One step further from freezing the fat is the snapback lipo. It's a liposuction with an additional radio frequency procedure that makes sure your skin get as much retraction as possible. This is for people that are in the gray zone area, people that don't have severe uh, roles, people that are in their 50s, maybe early 60s. They may need a tummy tuck, but they want to get as much as they can because for some reason, they're not ready for a tummy tuck now or they're in their 40s, but they don't want to take the risk of having skin laxity after a regular liposuction or a cool sculpting procedure. This is what this snapback lipo is here now. In the past, we didn't have this option. In the past, we had freezing the fat, liposuction, or get a tummy tuck. Now there is this snapback lipo that we offer here, which is an extra option for people that don't want to have a tummy tuck. Yes, it is surgical because just like liposuction, we have to numb you up. We have to do it in a sterile environment in the operating room. Um, it involves a few small incisions, some in the pubic area, some in the belly button area. No, it doesn't have to be general anesthesia. Majority of people do it under general. My, uh, many of our patients don't like to go under general. And I'm very, like, I like doing them actually under local because I get to talk to my patients. I make friends. They see how the procedure is done. It's amazing how they, the comments I get after the procedure. They say like, oh, Dr. Hakimi, I didn't know this was so much work. I hope you're getting home, getting some rest, as opposed to going to sleep and waking up and while up, it's done. Yes, procedure takes about two hours. Recovery is not that much. Majority of liposuction patients, they just have some achiness for a few days. And in about four weeks, you can go back to normal workout and whatnot. Now, one level higher than liposuction is a tummy tuck procedure. Tummy tuck is for patients that have a lot of skin problems, meaning they have excess skin, they have a lot of stretch marks, and they have extra actually fatty tissue and skin that needs to be cut out. That is not, there is a limit in how much snapback lipo can retract the skin. And it's really hard to tell who falls into which category if you're not a plastic surgeon. So that's why we always encourage patients to come in for a consultation or at least send photos and have a virtual consultation because a plastic surgeon that's familiar with snapback lipo could tell you whether that liposuction machine is gonna be able to achieve your results or you might need a tummy tuck, which takes about three hours or so, it has a good downtime of two weeks because we tighten up the muscle, we cut the skin out, so you have a surgical scar that goes from hip to hip. For the right patient, it's a very gratifying procedure. Um, yes, it's probably the most, uh, the heaviest surgery we do in terms of downtime. For two weeks when you walk, you're gonna feel tightness and a little bit of achiness in your abdomen, but it's because we tighten up the muscle, we suck out the fat and we cut the skin out. This is by far the gold standard for patients that have uh, that, are, that have had a few pregnancies and they want to tighten up their, their, their skin. So this is a slide we use here in our office um, to point out the areas that you can improve, right? People come to our office, they ask, look, what, okay, I love this radio frequency thing, sounds very exciting, but what areas can I treat? Basically, anywhere that you have skin and fat, you can treat it from your chin, double chin area, to your abdomen, to your hips, to your knees and caps. This is a diagram that you go over in our consultations for liposuction. As you can see, every area that we discussed that you have skin and fat, you can mark whether it's the back of the neck, in the front, bra rolls, uh, upper arms. These are all the areas that we can treat with snapback lipo. This is a 39-year-old woman who underwent a, a liposuction procedure and butt augmentation. Okay, she does, look at her skin. She doesn't have really rolls, like there is no, there's no real fold. It's a very subtle uh, fold here. She's still in her 30s. Despite her stretch marks, it didn't fold over much. And you can see one, two, three, and four small incisions. 
And uh, as a result, this is her after a liposuction uh, um, procedure. I don't know if you have a profile view of this in the next slide, Russell. And we sucked the fat out and we placed it in her buttock. So she went from a size four to a size six. This is a six month follow-up of, 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 of the procedure. I'm saying it because there's a lot of um, questions out there. Is fat injection, does fat injection actually work? If done right, fat grafting could be a very gratifying procedure in any area of your body, whether it's in the buttocks or the face, um, it's, it can be very visually gratifying for patients, especially if you're taking all the fat out, look at how much flatter her abdomen is and the curvature in her lower back and the roundness in her buttocks area, or what we call a dorsal hump. This is the area that either because of um, weight gain people develop fat or because of medication. A lot of patients that are on antiviral medication or on steroid medication, they have, um, they, they, uh, they get this and they don't really know what to do with it. This patient underwent a 30 minute procedure in the office and we sucked the fat out and we did a skin a radio frequency treatment and look at the difference. Another liposuction patient, right? I'm showing you these because I want you to get a sense for who is a good uh, who is a good candidate for liposuction? She has excess fat, a little bit of skin looseness, but she doesn't have a skin folding over her lower abdomen. You can see improvement in her curves and the frontal uh, view is much more flat. This is a step back lipo patient, right? But she's in her late 50s. Her skin doesn't have the, the, the firmness, doesn't have the elasticity of the previous patients that I showed you. And if you use your imaginations a little bit and look at the shadows in the skin and the texture of her skin, she was not a good candidate for a straight up, straight up liposuction. She would be very high risk to have collapsed skin. Now this is her six months after a snapback lipo. You can see the improvement in her abdomen without any worsening of the fold that she had. This is something that we didn't have access to four or five years ago. Now, five years ago, if somebody would come to my office saying, Dr. Hikimi, when I do this, I don't like the wrinkles, I had nothing to offer her. She's not even a good candidate for tummy tuck because she doesn't have that much skin looseness. I wouldn't be able to cut out a portion of her skin and strain this up. But now we have this snap back lipo procedure which is not just restricted to people who have fat. This woman is a very athletic individual in my town who has a very famous Instagram account because she's also a bodybuilder. In her case, we did the same snapback liposuction, but we, we tuned it, we, we changed our parameters. So instead of melting too much fat, we just heated the skin up to make the skin connect to the muscle tighter. When your skin gets tighter, when you move, you don't see the waves formation, you don't see the crepiness or the wrinkles. Same patient from a different view. You can see the laxity in this area. You can see that the skin is about to fold over. And one of the things that she said that was interesting, she said, in the morning when I brush my teeth and I don't have my clothes on, my skin hangs much more than it used to. And that's not what I'm used to. So with this treatment, we're, it's okay. With this treatment, we were able to uh, make the skin stick down to the muscle and she's now much happier because she's gotten that uh, strength back again in her skin. Another area that commonly is liposuction is what we call the bra rolls. You can see the fold here and here. This patient, as much as I love doing liposuction of the back, but she was borderline because you see she has skin folds and she's in her 50s. Not only we liposuction this, what we did a lot of radio frequency treatment so the skin doesn't fold over. More of the same, right? Skin looseness on the lower part of the abdomen. This is definitely a tummy tuck material patient, right? She doesn't have that much fat, but this is way too much skin to, and not much fat. This is her six months after a radio frequency skin tightening or a, what we call a snapback lipo without taking much fat out, mostly just skin tightening. And you can see the dramatic improvement. I don't wanna show this to say anybody with this fold is gonna be a good candidate 
for liposuction, but believe it or not, there are patients that in the past, they would have 100% needed liposuction, but with this procedure, we're able to melt fat and actually tighten the skin, so she, did, she didn't need a tummy tuck. You would think the first, the, at first glance, you might think that she needs liposuction. But what brought her to my office was not so much the fullness of the lower part of her abdomen. It was the crepiness of the wrinkles in the lower part of her abdomen. Now, this is her, again, three months after a snapback lipo. Did she lose some fat? Yes, we melted some fat. We made this so much smoother. But also, the most important part for her was that the, uh, basically ironing out the wrinkles in the lower part of her abdomen. If we'd done a liposuction alone, I would guarantee you that this would look like a pillowcase without a pillow because you would take all the volume out and she would be stuck with folds and wrinkles of skin. I think we managed to have photos of every part of this of, of body in this presentation. We covered the back, we covered the abdomen, and here are the arms. This is a patient, again, in her 40s, that she went elsewhere, they said you could have liposuction, but you might end up with, a, with, with extra hanging skin, so the better option would be to do an arm lift. And as a plastic surgeon, we all know how to do a good arm lift surgery, but it comes with a commitment to a scar that goes from your elbow down to your armpit. This is her three months after a snapback lipo. You can see the dramatic improvement in the hanging skin not to mention the entire procedure was done under local anesthesia. So let's try see if this video works also. This is the same procedure that I just described. Okay, here we go. Nothing fancy, it's just that uh, we heat up the skin and we take the fat out. Patient is wide awake, but I don't know if this one doesn't have a sound on it. You got a sense for it, right? So she's completely awake. There's no anesthesiologist here. She moves to the right side, we do this arm. Then I ask the patient to roll to the other side and we do the other part. And this is the type of results you can expect from a snapback lipo procedure. It's very gratifying, especially in women that are very self-conscious about their arms. And more arms. You can, see the, you can see the improvement in the curvature here. Now go to the next slide. I saw this patient yesterday, so I just added this. I know Russell has in this uh, photo before, but the look and the amount of improvement. I mean, I know my technology is great, but this is a whole different level. The photo on the lower part is before, photo on the top is after photo. This is the result that I get from an arm lift. And now we're able to push the envelope so far to give you this result under local anesthesia in two hours. You can see braro could come in two flavors. It's called anterior braro or posterior braro. Whatever bothers you, we can liposuction and heat up the skin so it sticks down to your muscle faster. The posterior bra roll is what you see on the back. The anterior one is what you see in the front of your bra, in front of your armpit. Okay, so we talked about fat. We talked about skin tightening. It's not fat problem. It's mostly skin problem. The same technology, the same radio frequency technology that tightens the skin is also able to make the crepey skin thicker and tighter. I know at least on my, on my monitor, the resolution is really low and things look overexposed, but take my word for it that this is, this is a, uh, what they call a nincle, which stands for knee wrinkle apparently. Patient in their 40s, 50s, they start noticing these lines on top of their knees and nobody wants to have a thigh lift just to improve this area. This is a radio frequency result of three months after the procedure. You can see it's a dramatic improvement from before. And this is one of the most popular things we do in our office. People that wear skirts, summer, winter, doesn't matter. I had no idea this was such a huge issue until we started doing it. And they're one of my happiest patients here. So as far as the recovery for all of these uh, snapback lipos, uh, you'll be aching for a few days. It will be unusual if you need pain medication the next day. Quite honestly, you know, people take one or two the night after, mainly because they're nervous. They don't know what happens when the numbing goes away. But when the numbing goes away, everyone says, surprisingly, it just felt like my son punched me or I hit a door. It's not a bad recovery period. Um, there will be a commitment to compression garment. As you can see, we, we undermine your skin and we heat up the skin from under. So we want the skin to scar down and to conform to your body, to your, to your arms. 
you can just leave the skin hanging, wobbly, and moving around, and hoping that it would scar down to the right place. After the procedure, we put foam on your skin and we put a compression garment, which you can take off at home, but you have to commit to it for a few weeks so the skin goes where we want it to go. And also it keeps the swelling out of your body faster. You can be back to workout at about one week. I tell my patients, as long as it's not swollen or it's not jiggly and you feel okay going back to workout, you could go back to workout because we're not cutting your muscle. We're not doing a tummy tuck. So there's no reason to avoid workout for you know, a month or so, which is common with other surgical procedures we do. That's why there's no lifting restrictions. And you will start to dig the result by four weeks. At the end of four weeks, you're gonna be like, you're gonna be able to look in the mirror and say, okay, I know why I did this procedure, I like it. But that's not your final results. You're still gonna be swollen up to three to six months. So um, when, when people come into our office at one month, I tell them that it's going to still get better, at least double or triple what you have now because the swelling takes a long time to get out of your body. So for final results, all the photos you saw today and everything you see online on other people's liposuction photos, they're at least three months out. So let's talk about cellulite. If you've ever Googled cellulite treatment, you're going to come up with a million different treatments. And what that tells you when there's a problem with too many solutions, that means none of them are really good. It's because cellulite is very complicated. It's, it's a problem with the skin and it's a problem with the fat. As you, see in in, as you see in this diagram, a few things happen. As we age, the skin surface gets thinner and the collagen level layer underneath it, which acts as a scaffold to hold the skin together gets thinner and flimsier, and it's not quite as strong. So you already have a weak skin layer here. Underneath that skin, there is fat cells, which they could go up or down in their density depending on your diet. Now, you remember how I told you in the snapback lipo that that snapback radio frequency machine makes your skin get closer to your muscle and stick down to your muscle stronger so your skin is not as loose. These lines are like tendons that connect your muscle to your skin. And this is what snapback lipo um, works on, on these tendons, makes these tendons shrink and therefore makes the skin uh, stronger and make the skin snap back. Now, ironically, in cellulites, when you look at the pathology in cellulites, there is also a problem with this line. These tendons get much, uh, they get loose. So you have fat that's getting, that's protruding or herniating from these areas, and you have parts of the skin that st sticks down. So part of the skin is loose, and part of the skin is st sticks down. It's because some of these tendons are loose, some of these tendons are still tight. And that's what gives the cellulite that appearance of hills and valleys, hills and valleys. Depends on which, which tendon is still tight, which tendon has gotten loose. Now you can see why some people think or claim that liposuction is gonna be an answer to cellulite. It's a well-intended attempt to make this fat layer thinner. When you have less material here, you're gonna have less material to herniate. Therefore, your hills and valleys, the hills are not gonna be as, uh, the hills are not gonna be as tall as they were prior to liposuction. Because that doesn't answer the, um, the skin looseness. It only addresses one part. It only addresses the fat. Liposuction alone doesn't, make this line, the tendons any stronger and doesn't make the collagen layer here any stronger. That's why what we have at Liftique, an ideal treatment for this procedure. Let's see what's our next slide, Russell. So let's, before we even go into that, let's look at the different stages of um, cellulite, right? It doesn't affect what we're gonna talk about, but you're all familiar in your 20s and 30s, you can see cellulite when you squeeze it and squeeze it together. 
at an advanced stage, you're gonna see it when you actually stretch the skin. A little bit more advanced stage, even just standing up should show you the, the cellulite. And this is a very advanced stage that just standing up or lying down regardless, you're gonna be able to see the cellulite. So what we do with um, the radio frequency machine that treats cellulite here, it's a little different from the machine that you saw previously. This machine is not quite as invasive, doesn't go under the skin. It's a stamping machine that has needles that go into your skin. The needles are gonna heat up the skin to make the skin thicker, make the top layer of the skin make more collagen and become stronger. And then there are needles that are deeper than the skin and they go into the fat pockets and selectively melt the fat pockets. Let's go back two slides, please. Our machine, the needles go in, melt the fat here, tighten this tendon that's connecting the skin to the muscle, and also stimulate the skin to make more collagen. That's the scaffold that's holding the skin together. Now let's go back two slides forward and look at some sample. Um, so this is a patient again, three months after a uh, cellulite treatment with radio frequency. I think we went too far, but they're all cellulite. So, you can see we have to take very good photos because lighting is gonna be a big deal. You can, you can make your cellulite disappear with good lighting. So you can see the, all the small areas. We mark these prior to the procedure. And this is the same patient three months after a radio frequency procedure for her cellulite. Is the snapback lipo good for PPL overweight? Is there a threshold or BMI that is not rec it's not recommended for? Very good question. Liposuction in general is not a weight loss method. It's a very expensive weight loss method, but it's not even good. Liposuction is for patients who've lost as much weight as possible and they just need help at the end. Now. The, 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 the beauty of this question is it points out a safety issue. Any plastic surgery procedure that you do, there are risks with it. The most dreaded one is the risk of blood clot formation in your legs. And with obesity comes that risk. Now, because we do, uh, we do liposuction under local anesthesia, our threshold is a little bit higher for the weight and BMI cutoffs. So the recommendation is, these procedures should be done on patients with BMI of 30. And BMI, for those of you who don't know, is a ratio of your weight to your height. Because someone could be 170 pounds and 5'4", the same 170 pounds at a 6'1", is a very different ratio, right? Um, so I can't answer that question. It is still a good option, but I would like to see you in person and look at your height and weight and go from there. I'm in good health at 72. Is it self to get, safe to get a tummy tuck? Followed by how many treatments do you need for knee snapback lipo? Uh, as long as your heart is healthy, dear, and you can take general anesthesia, uh, uh, facelift, tummy tucks, none of these plastics procedures are unsafe if, because of your age. I've done a tummy tuck on an 82-year-old that had never been able to wear a bikini because she had a childhood trauma she had a very large scar on her abdomen and she was gonna go to Florida. And she said, for the first time, I want to be able to wear a bikini. And um, so your age is not an issue at all. With regards to the knees, one treatment. Could you repeat the treatment? Yes. If you want to repeat the treatment once a year or so, just for maintenance, you could. But the results are supposed to last you a good three to five years, depending on your own health and your skin health, and uh, you don't need more than one treatment, which takes about two or three hours under local anesthesia. And mm -hmm. this, the knee treatment is done by our nurses. So it's a very, it's a very casual procedure with much more um, scheduling um, availability for patients. How about, will cellulite come back? <sighs> yes, if, you, if your weight changes. If your weight is stable, it's very unlikely to come back. Now, I always tell people the same example. You go to the gym, you spend time and money in getting a trainer. If you don't go to the gym to maintain your, your physique, you're gonna lose it. So why do, we try, why do we treat our skin, which is the largest organ in our body, any differently? Um, so it doesn't come back, 
but it's only if your weight is stable and you do things to take care of your skin, whether it's skincare or a facial or a hydrofacial, you can do all of these on your thighs, on your arms, basically continuous in, in, uh, continuously stimulating your skin once a year or once every six months. What's the difference between liposuction and laser sculpting? Very good question, thank you. I was debating, but I didn't have time to go over it. A lot of things you're gonna hear on TV, on the internet, there's some, there's some marketing to it too, right? Laser sculpting, all it is is liposuction with a laser component. Snapback lipo is liposuction with a radio frequency component. Some of you have heard of smart lipo. It's been around for a long time. Uh, laser sculpting is a, a twist on the same thing. The machine that they use to do laser sculpting is the same machine that they use for smart lipo, which is a liposuction machine. And then after they're done treating the abdomen, for example, there's a laser machine that they run on the skin. And the hope is that laser heating up the skin is gonna make the skin retract and tighten up after the procedure. Our snapback lipo, instead of using laser, uses radio frequency. My personal bias for radio frequency instead of laser is uh, there's much lower chance of burn with radio frequency than it is with laser. In patients with any pigments in their, in their color, Hispanics, uh, Middle Eastern, black patients, anybody that has pigments in their skin, we all know that there is concerns about using laser on your skin. Radio frequency is colorblind. It's very safe to be done on any skin color, and it's very hard to, con to cause a burn with radio frequency. Is what happens when I get liposuction? Does the fat go anywhere else? Why is it that my friend had liposuction and now all of a sudden her arms are blowing up? Um, something that people don't know is for women, after the age of 15 or 16, the number of fat cells in your body doesn't change. We're all stuck with the same number of fat cells. As we gain weight, the same number just gets bigger. And as we lose weight, this, the same number of cells just gets smaller. What liposuction does, or what freezing the fat for that matter does, is it takes out a certain number of cells. So think about it. We have a finite number of fat cells in our body. Now with liposuction or cool sculpting, we take out a, a portion of that. So as we gain weight again, if we do, your body doesn't have the same reservoir of fat cells to, to store that energy in. We took them all out of your abdomen. So obviously your body is gonna find elsewhere to, to, to deposit that energy. So your fat cells in your arms might get bigger. Or worst scenario is if it gets inside your abdomen and then your belly grows without actually being something that we can liposuction. Because the fat that's inside your abdomen behind the muscle is the one that's always problematic. It's the one that's only a response thing to diet and exercise, not liposuction or tummy tuck. So it's a very good question and it emphasizes the point how great life, how important a lifestyle change is after liposuction. Because yes, if you get a great liposuction result and you let go and go back to the old diet and you gain weight, it could come back anywhere. And it's kind of hit or miss. It all depends on your genetic footprints. We can I can't look at you and say, if you gain weight, it's gonna be in your arms or in your chin area. It's, it's, it's a hit or miss who gains it where, but this question comes up a lot. Cellulite treatment, am I too old for cellulite treatment? Not really, it all depends on your skin anatomy. You know, the age doesn't really mean much here.